mountain, the air, the trees, the streams, the wind. That's real. It's not a, a hard thing to do. I mean, nobody wants to be alone, you know, being forgotten and left down. With Joe, like the reality is, is probably as far out and, uh, as, as, as the myths in the movies to some extent. Joe's struggle has been to survive physically, whereas my struggle has been for psychological survival. Stop living like this, Joe. For Joe, society is, is not his home, I don't think, as it's never been for me. Well, in the wild, I'm, I know what I'm dealing with. Sometimes you get the feeling of isolation. But then you knew that's what, what goes with it. It's part of the territory. You are isolated and you're alone. I think it'll always be there for me. Maybe that, that lonely guy in the bar, that the story that he wants to tell you, you might think that he's just trying to get it off his chest or he's just lonely, but uh, in actual fact, that story is, is especially for you. all that experience, all that life makes you that type of person that then you can't remove it, it's stuck with you, right? Mining, working it. When they hit a spot, everybody would come together and tents would go up and then everybody's going and giving her and they're all like a rush. <laughs> now gold fever is a very real thing. And the thing is, when you're dealing with social stress, it's like, it's an ongoing thing, it never ends. It's always there. But people misuse that word so much. And they think that gold fever is, your friend's going down to the river every day and pan, and he's got gold fever. That's not gold fever. Gold fever is something that actually happens. And it only happens when the gold's there. It's a spectrum. If you think about a tree, it starts with the roots. Like this tree starts growing before you can even see. So yeah, the infraterrestrial would be the uh, the roots of the species, and the extraterrestrial would be fruit. You know, roots are good to eat as well as fruit. And I think it's probably premature to talk about elves and dwarves. Alchemy. You're not even the same person, I mean, you've totally changed your not done. The whole alchemical model is, is a bit, a bit skewed, really. I don't know if it affects everybody. But I know it affects me. Most people don't find, most people look and don't find, yeah? But then even the people who look and find uh, don't understand what they find. You adapt your eyes for that when you I'll prospect them. Yeah, the fairies don't like to be photographed. You just gotta recognize them if you see them. Even the Irish people wouldn't, wouldn't even talk about the gentry as they call them. Now this is the truth that's crazy to me. <laughs> well, I call them the good people because they didn't want to offend them. I mean, it's a metaphor, yeah. But then a metaphor for what? Like you get a lot of people, you know, Oh, I struck it red right for this down the other. Yet they don't even know what a face you look like. They don't even know what they're talking about. People, when they get wrapped up in their gold, they get so excited. Because they think of gold as money. They're thinking of just of what they can turn it into. They don't see anymore what they're doing or where they're going. And a lot of times they start undermining themselves. But if you kid yourself, about what you can or can't do in the wild, then 
then you probably won't survive your illusions. Things really switch fast. You gotta know what are the important things to grab. You don't just grab everything. Million and one beliefs and theories and too many for any one human being to comprehend. Everything we use is incomprehensible to us. It's all our lives. We struggle to go forward. We struggle for nickel and dime this time. And then suddenly you realize it. All is golden for you. And your body goes into a form of shock. It's just wonderful, you know? it's a wonderful gift that the good Lord gave us. It puts your body in total shock, and I think it's because of all the suffering that we do, subconsciously stores up in our mind, and we're under a lot of stress and pressure. And when something like that happens, it's kind of like, a can opener, just cracked open the can and let out all the pressure. You're like relieved from all those things that held you down. It's a metaphor for a psychological process. We're trying to follow the gold to its home. We, we can't follow the gold itself. It's, it's microscopic, we can't see it. So we have to look for larger events and see how they're behaving, which way they're going, in order to get a sense of where the goal is. Not often, it's a few people, well selected, they get an opportunity to unload and release the stress. It comes out in the open and shows us. You gotta really put yourself close to it. Presuming intelligence. But there's a glow that comes around you. This glow only happens to people who it's happened to. Enlightenment, but then what's enlightenment? That's why you're never the same either. Because <laughs> the pressure's gone. I mean, I'd love to find gold. Of course, who wouldn't? And that's what I call it is the glow. I can't imagine like being deranged by it where the Fred C. Dobbs was. Somebody who was under stress for many, many years and suddenly got released. Very rare species. I related also very close to God too, eh? Don't want to get too too deep in this tarot. So it's like two subjects meeting up head to head, right? Mm -hmm. And they have to go one way or the other. Treasure the Sierra Madre and then just rock a little bit this way. There's no one. Yeah. So you live with it, you deal with it. All things collapse tomorrow, they better have a buck saw, a hatchet, and a knife.